keep writing, finish it, get it out there. Don't take the notes too seriously. Every morning, it's your job to believe in yourself and to put down some pages. And that's it. Um, so would you like to explain what you are about and like what you're writing about? Would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Um, yes, I'm Josephine Angelini. I'm an author of YA and fantasy and even a middle grade book. Uh, my latest release is going to be called Scions. It's the continuation of my Starcross series, which came out 10 years ago. I'm also a new publisher. I've started my own publishing imprint with my husband, and it's called Sungrazer. And Scions will be our first release. We're going to start with Scions, and then there are going to be three more books in that series. And we're also starting another series called the Lucitopia series um, at the same time. <laughs> so a lot of books coming out, a lot of things happening. <laughs> That's insane. And how did you first notice that you're a writer and this is what you want to do? Well, I've always written. Um, I started, my sister Mary Frances, I'm the youngest of eight kids and I have six older sisters and an older brother. And when I was, I think I was 10 years old, my sister Mary Frances gave me a, a journal for Christmas and I started writing in it and I kept writing in it every day. And it was one of those things where I didn't, I didn't even notice I was a writer, but I was writing every day. And I had actually a, a teacher of mine at NYU, I went to Tisch. So I was at art school at Tisch. And he said, you know, you're a writer, right? And I couldn't, I was like, no, no, I'm not a writer. He said, Josie, what do you do every day? And I was like, eat, sleep, breathe. Oh, right. Maybe I am a writer. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was actually a big revelation for me. I, I didn't really get it before then. It seems like such a big label, but once you embrace it, you know yeah. that. It's and it's really scary because it's one of those things, especially if you're a reader and I've always been a reader and you love it. The things that you love the most are also the source of your greatest fears. So I was like, no, 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 there's no way I could do that. I'm not smart enough for that. And I don't know, I ran away from it for a long time, but I think there are a lot of people who do. I can really relate to that. And yeah. would like to tell me about your new project, which is Science. Yeah. Um, what is it all about and why did you decide to write that and not another series? Okay, um, so Science is a continuation of the Starcross series. It's a prequel. And if Starcross is a modern day reimagining of the Iliad, Uh, where a, a Helen of Troy, who lives on Nantucket Island in Massachusetts, meets a descendant of Apollo, and she finds out that she's a descendant of Zeus, and she tries to kill him. But <laughs> um, she finds out that she's sort of wrapped up in this whole uh, replaying of the Trojan War. So Scions, very much like Starcrossed, it starts with Daphne, who's Helen's mother, and she moves to New York City in 1993 and she finds out she goes through the same process of meeting someone and realizing that if she gets together with him she'll start a war and Scions is the setup for Starcross so there are no there are no spoilers as to what's going to happen in Starcross it's its own unique story set in a different time different place but with that same impossible love so that's and when I look at the Starcross series Daphne is so misunderstood mm -hmm. and such a complex character. Okay. Why did you choose to write about her and not about a sequel of Helen and Lucas, for example, um, which I think you want to write about, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's next. So I'm doing I'm doing Scions as a prequel, and then there'll be Timeless, which is a recon it's a continuation of Helen and Lucas's story. And right now, I'm still writing Outcasts, which is back to Daphne and Ajax, and then Endless will be the final book, and that's going to be the end of Helen and Lucas's story. So I'm going back and forth through time so that the reader can see the whole picture. And by the time it comes together in Endless, you understand why I had to tell. Daphne and Ajax's story as well. Um, and the reason why I wanted to continue with her was because I think Helen of Troy is a very complicated character and she's seen as a villain in a lot of 
in a lot of the different translations, there's Ovid, there's Virgil, there's Homer, there's a whole lot of writers who wrote about Helen of Troy. And um, I feel like Daphne's even more similar to Helen of Troy than my Helen is. And so I really wanted to delve into that story. Completely understandable. And I think it will give a different picture to the whole Star Cross series yeah. because so many fans have reread it all the time because they didn't have any other material. Like <laughs> I I know the story from beginning to end all by heart. So that kind of outlook will be amazing in my opinion. Um, do you know how, how you plot? Like, of course you know how to plot, but like, how do you plot that makes it interesting? Um, and I, I've read that you do plotting in like right, sitting down and um, writing down all of the details before you even start writing. How did you start that process even? I'm very particular about it. I, I tend to write books with huge casts. Um, probably because I'm from such a big family. So I think in like, there's got to be at least 15 main characters. Uh, and a lot of stuff happens in my books. There's a lot of action. So for me, I need to plot it. I need to sit down and think through step by step by step to make sure I don't have any plot holes and to make sure that all of my characters are complete. And I do it because it's the best way for me to navigate my own imagination and I allow things to change as I'm going. Like I, I come, I start with my main, the big plot point. So, you know, the beginning, the inciting incident, end of act one, midpoint, end of act two, climax, denouement. And I map out how that's gonna work. Just saying, this is the story. And then I give myself leeway in the beginning, right, right up to the midpoint almost. I give myself a lot of room to change stuff around or come up with a different climax, say, but usually that stays the same. Usually the ending stays the same. And I allow myself to find the characters as best possible. But after I hit that, the middle of the book, I really need to sit down and hammer out this scene, then that scene, then that scene, because I have to make sure that I've addressed and closed all the loops that I've started at the beginning of the book. So for me, it's just, it's the best way for me to make sure that every scene that is on the page needs to be there, that there's nothing extraneous, there's nothing that's like off topic or, you know, I'm just wandering around inside the story. No, I want to make sure that the story is direct and that every single scene needs to be there. And it answers a question that I've posed at the beginning of the book. So for me, it's, but it's the only way for me to get through it without getting lost and without getting writer's block. I think a lot the reason why a lot of people get writer's block is because they just don't know what comes next. Yeah. Know, they don't know. They have this great idea, but they just don't know what comes next. And if you sit down and you write it out scene by scene, you can keep yourself from going, well, I don't know what I'm going to write today because <laughs> it's all there. You know what you're going to write. <laughs> So that doesn't mean that you should, you can't, if you come up with a great idea, figure out how to work it in. You know, you should still follow your inspiration. It still it should be fresh for you. But I think people get stuck less if they sit down and they map it out before they get working. And I guess it holds you accountable as well. Yeah. Yeah. You say, no, this is really the story I'm going to tell. And sometimes you come up with an idea and you're like, wait a minute, that's a whole different story. Well, you can write that book later, you know. <laughs> what is your favorite story that you've ever written? That I've ever written? Well, it's not out yet. My favorite story, oh man, just because it was so hard. Um, I wrote a book called Vault of Souls and it's the first book in uh, the Widows of Nineland series, which is a series that's going to be coming out next year um, under Sungrazer. Yay! Uh, it's a it's an adult high fantasy, multi character, huge world, big epic storytelling. And the reason why it's my favorite was because it took me the longest. It was the hardest. It was the most complicated story I've ever written. And I think it's just my favorite because it was so hard. Because I had to really reach like I had to push myself to finish it yeah and you have so much experience when it comes to being a writer and publishing and all of that um what would your number one advice be for an upcoming writer so I think a lot of writers it's they get discouraged before they finish a book that's number one and 
you know, you really just have to keep going through that. Number two, a lot of writers get discouraged when they get their first round of notes. And then they say, it was a terrible idea. I'm never going to do it. You know, I can't finish it. Um, I think my advice for a writer just starting out is that you don't have to take every note that's been given to you. But realize that that person who was reading it stopped for a second and said, what's what's wrong with this? Like, what's wrong with the story? Usually they give you the wrong advice the, you know, they'll say there was something wrong with this scene. I didn't like the dialogue. Well, they didn't like the dialogue because it wasn't set up right. Like those characters weren't set up right. And just remember that the note is very rarely the note. Like that's not what you have to fix, but it's there for a reason. And they're not trying to they're, they're trying to help you figure it out. So I think getting notes is so hard, especially when you're young and you, it's so easy to get discouraged because you think this means the person didn't like the story. That's not it at all. If the person didn't like the story, usually they'll just go, oh, it was great. And they just won't give you any notes at all because they just don't want to deal with it. Realize that that person's trying to help you get better. And that yeah. if you can just stop and remove yourself from the situation for a second and say, let me figure this out. Let me figure out why this person stopped reading and left a note. Not only will you become a better writer, but you'll enjoy it more. You'll enjoy the process more. So you'll keep coming back to it. Yeah. And what is the hardest part about being a writer, in your opinion? Navigating the... Every career has its ups and downs. There are books people love and there are books people don't love so much. And realizing that you wrote that book for yourself and that, you know, not everybody's going to love everything that you do. <laughs> the ups and downs of it, I think, are the hardest. And just keeping, you know, you keep going on to the next book. Keep go And it's very hard to say, but I put so much time and effort into that and now I'm supposed to just move on to the next book. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's your job. But that really is the hardest part. I think for me to navigate was sort of just to, realize that there's going to be big successes and then there's going to be times when everybody's quiet and they're like yeah it was okay and then you got to get up and you got to do it again the next day so yeah yeah and did that play into you launching your own publishing um company um mm -hmm. or did you have other reasons and how does it feel to self-publish so the publishing has changed so much from the time when I started and what's expected of an author has changed so much. So but I, I felt like the publishing houses had less and left less to offer me and they were asking more and more what I was going to do for them. And I felt like, well, if I'm going to be doing all of this publicity myself and I'm, you know, social media has become so important now. Why aren't I doing it all myself? That way I get to make all my own choices and I get to pick my book cover. I get to decide how what the print run's going to be. I get to decide, you know, when, where, how I release this book. And for me, it was almost, it was sort of a no-brainer. It was just, I realized that the if you are working with a distributor and you're still putting your books into stores, you can you can do it all yourself now. It's not like it was 15 years ago, you know? I don't know. I think it's really exciting. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Very, and, and do you want to publish just your own things and the ones of your husband's, or do you want to um, have other authors as well? Oh, we definitely want to take on other authors. Right now we're just starting with me because I have a built-in fan base. I know that my readers are going to come back for this book, and I know... Like I, I need to understand distribution and print run and and you know trim size and all that stuff that goes into publishing before I go to another author and say, look, this is what I can do for you, and this is how I can help you get your book out there. But eventually, we definitely want to take on other authors. Like I love reading, and I'm a fan of so many different books that I want to be part of the process of helping somebody else get those books out you know so. what was the most exciting part about your career until now of, of course what was the most exciting part um i don't i think I, really it was just starting it it was getting getting going and you know getting my first deal that was that was kind of like a blur that was 
writing that first book, finishing that first book and being like, hey, look, I, I made a book. <laughs> I think that was probably the most exciting thing. That's one of the most exciting things that's ever happened to me because I, for years and years, I didn't think it would happen. So having it physically in your hand must be out of this world. Unreal. Just unreal. When you the first time your book comes to you and you pull it up out of the box, it's it's really strange. <laughs> it's just strange and lovely. So. How much of your own life do you put in the books? Are you trying to be careful about not putting too much autobiography into it? Or is it just a very natural process of not even thinking about it too much? It depends on the book. So I've written, I have a middle grade book um, called Snow Lane that's based on my life growing up. And there's a lot of my life in that. Um, my first few books, I basically just stole friends of mine out of my life and stuck them in the book. And I told them too, I was like, you're going to be in this book. And they were like, okay, I'm on for the ride. But I think as I've, there are always bits and pieces of you in every single one of your characters. I mean, that's impossible to avoid, but um I think more in the beginning, I borrowed from my life. And now it's more, I've used that already. So now I'm looking elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a very, very natural process of um, getting your first books out and then finding some new inspiration out of there. Yeah. Um, and um, of course, you don't have to answer this question, but I read about you um, getting sick And how did that play into you writing? Um, was it hard writing through or did it help you through the process? So I, I had cancer and um, when I found out I had cancer, I sort of, I had to regroup a lot and I didn't write for a while. I was just focused on getting healthy. I pulled away from social media, big mistake. <laughs> But, you know, I had to I had to focus on myself and I had to get well. I my daughter was two at the time as well. So she was having a really hard time understanding why mommy was away. Like she couldn't come and visit me in the cancer ward and why when I came home I slept all the time and why I couldn't pick her up and um emotionally it was a very difficult time for me to go through and I came out of it writing a story sort of about it. it I wrote a YA thriller called What She Found in the Woods and I made um, a monster and I put the monster in the book because that's what I do like if something is terrifying for me I, I make a character out of it and put it in the book and um, writing ultimately helped me heal and get better from that but while I was in the middle of it you know it was pretty much every second was just stay alive <laughs> so that's that was a difficult process and I had to put writing aside for a little while I totally understand that and I think art just gives you healing in a different process and mm -hmm. in a way that you didn't expect so to see that like you went through that with inspiration afterwards is very inspirational um and very nice to see definitely yeah. um and yeah in one of your interviews i think you said overnight success stories take about seven years <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, everything takes years <laughs> you think it's going to be tomorrow no 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 it's years and years of work and that's something For young writers or people who are just starting out, even if you're older and this is the first time you're you're coming to writing and you're thinking, oh, I can't do this. It really, it takes forever. Everything takes forever. It just, it, it really is um, seeing it as a job. Like you get up and you keep working on it. And part of your job is to hope and to believe in yourself. That is, believing in yourself is your job when you're an artist. That's what you do every day. And find people, the best thing that you can do is find people who will believe in you every day too. And that's the, that's the only way to make it happen, really. I really think I needed to hear that. So thank <laughs> you for your vote today, or of my week. Um, <laughs> you said once uh, in 2015, I think, that social media is a challenge for you. Oh. Is that still a thing or did you get used to it? Okay, so I'm still there. 
Social media is weird. Everyone thinks it's all one thing. I didn't like Twitter. I didn't like Twitter. I wasn't good at it. Instagram, I felt like the only time you can be on Instagram is if you're perfect and you're like, I just woke up like this. And that's not me. Like, that's not who I am. And uh, then I found, then TikTok happened and I love it. Like I absolutely love making TikToks because you can be silly. You can be yourself. You can just, I don't know. I don't feel like, I felt like with Twitter, everybody's sort of waiting for you to mess up. And they're like, yeah, I hope she says something stupid so we can all make fun of her. And I hated it for that. I felt like it was a negative place, not just for myself, but for other writers. And, um, but I just, I think TikTok's totally different. It's like if, People don't like something. They just don't watch it. They don't feel compelled to say something mean. You know, it's just, I don't know. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so I really enjoy that now. Like I enjoy making little videos and fun stuff. But before it was very challenging for me because I felt like it was this, uh, I didn't feel like it was a safe place for people to go and experience each other, you know? Mm-hmm. That's really interesting to hear. So TikTok is your way to promote your stuff. I think so. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I get such a, I really do. Like I come up with the goofiest, I don't know. And it's cool. It's like the goofier you are, the more people like it. It's sort of, you're just allowed to relax and be yourself and not worry like, oh, is my hair perfect? Or is that my house clean? Is my, you know, it doesn't matter. And that feels better to me. That's really cool. And finally, is there anything that I didn't ask you about or anything final that you would like to tell a young writer that you really need to, needed to hear at that point? Oh, gosh. There, there's so many things that I want to say to young writers. Okay. So I'm I'm a big reader. Like, that's why I started my podcast with for like my, myself and three of my childhood friends, like Aileen, Alyssa, Lauren, and I have known each other since we were six. And we always talk about books because we love books. Um, and we ended up starting a podcast just because we were like, we have to talk about these books and tell people about them. I want young writers to know <clears throat> we're waiting for your book. We're we're waiting to read it. People who read get it and they're going to get you. They're going to understand what you have to say. And they're going to be so happy when you finish your book because they have something new and fun and wonderful to read. And there's always room at the table because as soon as we're done reading us as readers, I mean, the collective we readers, as soon as we're done with one really good book, we just want to go on to the next one. So keep writing, finish it, get it out there. Don't take the notes too seriously. Take them, understand this is that if somebody's giving you a note, it means that they care about your book and they want, they think you have something special and they're just trying to help you find it. And we're all waiting to read it. We are. So finish your book. <laughs> Amazing. I will, I will keep that in mind because, you know, you plot 10 different things and you never write that. Yes, yes, yes. It just, and it's, uh, the, the fear is real and I understand it, but just trust the process. Get up every morning. It's your job to believe in yourself and to put down some pages. And that's it. That's all that you have to do. And eventually your book is going to be done. And then you're going to be a writer because you finished a book. And it's like, it, it, I, I know it's it feels unbelievable, especially when you've never finished a book before. It feels like you can't do it, but you genuinely can. Like it, you will get to the end of the book eventually. Just stick with it. Amazing. Thank you so much. Wait, let me stop the recording. Okay. <laughs>